Okay, on to a pretty large topic here, solving systems of equations. Um, you probably spent well over a week on this in Algebra 1, so in, in just a 10-minute video here, we're not going to get that into it, but um, I'll show you two quick examples of the two, um, I think, most important techniques, uh, substitution and the other one, what I call elimination. Some people call it linear combination. I'm not going to get into the graphing technique. Um, these two algebraic techniques are the most important. So I'm going to do one of each, and um, hopefully this will help a little bit. Let's start off with one that, uh, and really both of these you could do with either technique, substitution or elimination, but this one is going to be a clear candidate for substitution. And the reason is, is because one of our equations, and really more than one, it's even more true, but one of them is already solved for one variable in terms of the other. We were using that language in a previous lesson. This, The top equation is y in terms of x. It is solved for y in terms of x. So you are ready to substitute. Um, you could move your x over and, and do the uh, elimination technique, but right now what you could do is take, th this is a statement, y equals 3x plus 2. Take that information and apply it to this situation of y. So we substitute. When we do that, I'm going to rewrite this second equation. It's x plus 2, but when I get the y, I stop and say, let's take the information from the first equation and apply it to the second. So instead of writing y, I'm going to say what the first equation told me what y, y was. So really, I've rewritten this equation here, rewritten it, except I've, I don't, instead of y, I have what the first equation said y is. Otherwise, it looks just like the second equation. Okay, now I have an equation which is one unknown, and that's really what we're trying to get to. We can now solve for the x, and when we get x, we can get y pretty quickly. So x, let's distribute, and we'll get 6x plus 4 equals 11, or 7x plus 4 equals 11. Subtract 4 on both sides, and we get 7x equals 7, and therefore x is 1. That one's done. Okay, well, you're not done yet, because this, what that means to solve a system of equations is to find out, really, what they have in common. If you were to graph them, they would in, these would intersect in one point. What is that point? And when you get one value, you can plug it into either equation, and the first one looks easier, but it would not matter if you plugged it into the first or the second. And you're going to end up with 3 plus 2 is 5. And the way we typically write our answers is in an ordered pair form like this. This is the coordinate that they both share. They both pass through that point. And that would be their intersection point. And again, this technique was called, let me write that up here, substitution. Because you substituted, sorry about that, you substituted the uh, value of y in one equation into y in the other equation. Okay, let's try. Okay, this example uh, is not going to be a great option for substitution. You could do it, but in substitution you have to solve one variable in terms of the other, and that would require a few algebra steps, and it would even it'd have fractions involved with it. So, if possible, we try to avo we avoid that. And really, um, this technique, when you see an equation in this ax plus by equals c form, where, let me show you that, um, this is like the a, this is the b, and this is the c when it's in this form, sometimes called the standard form, um, elimination is usually your way to go. Okay, so I, I, there's really three levels of examples I could show you, and we could spend a long time on this, but um, I just my goal is just to give you an introduction. So I'm going to show you the kind of the moderate example. The simplest example is the one where you could add the equations together right now, and one of the variables would be eliminated. Let me write that up here again. The name of this technique is elimination. That's what I call it. Some like to call it linear combination. I squeeze that in there. Some call it linear combination, but I typically call it um, elimination. Oh well, good enough. 
Um, if you were to add these together right now, you'd get 8x plus, four, uh, plus 8y equals 24. And uh, we did not eliminate a variable. So we need to do something to eliminate a variable. Um, so what you're looking at, it's very similar to the logic in finding a common denominator. Um, in 3 and 5, what is the common de denominator? What is the you call it least common multiple? Um, it would be like 15, right? Because if you did 3, it goes 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Um, let's see if I can make sense of this. With 5, here are the multiples of 5. With 3, here are the multiples. And we're looking for the least common one. And there we found it at 15. So I could multiply the top one by 3 and the bottom, bottom equation by 5, and they would have the same value. They have 15. That's not bad. Multiplying by 5 and 3, let's see if we can do better. In the second equation, or sorry, in, the, in looking at the y's, let's do a different color here. In looking at the y's, uh, and of course you're not writing this out, uh, there's some multiples of 6, here's some multiples of 2, and you see we get a match there pretty quick, 6. So in fact, to get there, I don't have to do anything to the, bottom, the top equation. I can just rewrite the top equation as this, 5x plus 6y equals 19. The bottom equation, though, we do need to multiply by 1, 2, 3. I usually write times 3. Now what I do, I always like to add because when we're subtracting a lot of things and if there are negatives involved, there aren't here, but we, we can make errors more easily. So I'm going to multiply by negative 3. And I always like to show what I'm multiplying by so that when I add them, uh, the y's will be eliminated. So you add down 5x minus 9x, negative 4x, 19 minus 15 is positive 4, so x is negative 1. Um, this may seem kind of tricky, but uh, if this is the first time you've seen it, but this is probably why you spent, I would guess, you, you might have spent, a, I don't know, two, three, four days on this one technique. Um, so again, this is just maybe a reminding you of what you did. Um, kind of thing. So we know x, we're not done because we want to find the intersection point. Um, if you know x, how can you get y? You can plug it into either equation. I'm going to choose plugging into the second one because the numbers look smaller. 3 times negative 1 plus 2y equals 5. So again, I have an equation with only one unknown. That's y and that's the one I need. So I can add 3 to both sides. And we have 2y equals 8. So y is 4. Run out of space here. So my solution, sorry about that. My solution is negative 1, 4. That's how we typically write it. Negative 1, 4. So elimination is a little bit involved, but and it's challenging when you have space, a uh, small amount of space that we have here. But that's how you do elimination. You look to multiply one or sometimes both equations by something. We could have eliminated the x's, like I said, by multiplying the top by 3 and the bottom by 5, or one of them negative, and that would eliminate them, but then our numbers would have been larger. So I chose eliminating the y's because I only had to multiply 1 by something, kind of minimize calculations, therefore minimize errors. Um, you solve for one letter that way, plug it into either equation, find the other letter, and now you have your intersection point. So I hope that helped. That's very brief. Uh, in, in solving systems of equations, you might look back over what you did in your class, um, but this is something important moving forward. So, have a good day. Made with DoodleCast Pro.